Hola, bienvenidos a la clase de español. In this video, we're going to look at some more uses of the present subjunctive in Spanish. Now remember that the subjunctive is a verb mood, and it can only be used in multi-clause sentences, and it can only be used in the subordinate clause or the secondary clause. That's the clause after the connecting word. And usually that connecting word, in fact, in all of our examples so far, that connecting word has been K. We're going to see a lot of K's in these examples as well, uh, but eventually we'll get to some uh, phrases that have other connecting words as well. So far, we've looked at using the subjunctive in noun clauses and adjective clauses. And that's where the, the part of the sentence that starts with the K serves the role of a noun or serves the role of an adjective to describe something that's been previously mentioned in the sentence. In this video, we want to look at using the subjunctive in adverbial clauses. So let's back up a minute and think about what an adverbial clause would be. Just like a noun clause was a clause that plays the role of a noun, and an adjective clause was a clause that plays the role of an adjective, an adverbial clause is going to be a clause that plays the role of an adverb. But adverbs are kind of like, in my mind, the trickiest part of speech, right? Nouns are things. Adjectives are words that describe things. So they tell a quality of the thing most of the time. Verbs are actions. But what is an adverb? Well, our definition tells us that an adverb is one word that modifies a verb. But what does it mean to modify a verb? Well, a verb is an action. So an adverb often tells how, when, or how often something happens. Now, as we'll see in some of the today's examples, we're also going to be looking at uh, clauses that don't just tell how or when, but they also tell under what circumstance, uh, or they give additional information about why something happens. But in all cases, adverbs are telling additional information uh, about the situation in which an action takes place. So again, an adverb is when you have one word that does one of those things. An adverbial clause is going to be multiple words, of course, including a conjugated verb that plays the same role, that tells how often, how, why, when, etc. an action takes place. In the sentence, I will run tomorrow, the word tomorrow is an adverb because it tells when I will do the action of running. Right? It modifies the action of run by telling when. And it's one word, so it's just an adverb. In the sentence, I go to my classroom before my students arrive, the whole phrase before my students arrive, which includes the conjugated verb arrive, is an adverbial clause. It's an adverbial clause because it has that conjugated verb and it modifies the action. It tells when, again, tells when I go to my classroom. When do I go? Before my students arrive. So that's a whole adverbial clause. All those words working together just to modify that verb of, or, uh, of go. I go to my classroom. Now, when we look at adverbial clauses in Spanish and think about uh, using the subjunctive, it's useful to group them into two different groups. And I only want to, in this video, look at the first group. And this first group of adverbial clauses are clauses that always, 100% of the time, uh, are going to trigger a use of the subjunctive in the adverbial clause. And if I could just borrow a phrase from the Spanish dude, that's because these clauses indicate no certainty of completion between the main clause and this subordinate adverbial clause. And we'll look at those when we look at the examples and, and what they mean in English. Now, when I started teaching adverbial clauses that always triggered the use of the subjunctive, I had six that I taught the students. And I had this great phrase to remember them, en caso de caspa. But then we started using a different textbook and uh, it added an additional adverbial clause to this group. So uh, one of my colleagues presented me with the, with the idea of escapa a to remember these. But then, I looked, at, uh, I looked at these phrases again, and I found an additional phrase that always uses the subjunctive. So our acronym for today is AAA space. And AAA space is going to tell us all of the adverbial clauses that we need to know that always require the use of the subjunctive. Let's look at them right now. The first A is antes de que, and that means before. We can see that one in the sentence, como el desayuno antes de que llegue el autobús. I eat breakfast before the bus arrives, or before that the bus arrives. Now, if we think about this from uh, our logical interpretation of the meaning, 
at the time of the main clause when I'm eating breakfast, I have no certainty of completion of the next action, which is the bus arriving. And I don't have certainty of that because it hasn't happened yet, because it's a future action. Although I'm able to use present tense in both of those clauses because of how it's set up. My next A is a fin de que, which means so that. And we can see that one in the example, mi cuaderno está organizado a fin de que yo pueda encontrar mis apuntes. My notebook is organized so that I can find my notes. Again, when I'm saying that my notebook is organized, I haven't necessarily looked for my notes, so there's no certainty of completion that I'm going to find them. But I'm just saying that's the reason why I keep the, or the notebook organized to begin with. My next A from the AAA is a menos que, which means unless. We can see that in the example, tendremos clase al aire libre a menos que llueva. We will have class outside unless it rains. So when I'm saying we will have class outside, I don't know if it's going to rain or not. That's a, I have no certainty of completion of the raining, which is why I need to put that rain in the subjunctive. So those are my three A's from the AAA and now on to space. The S is for sin que, and that means without. We can see that in the example, salgo de casa sin que mis padres sepan. I leave the house without my parents knowing, or I leave the house without that my parents know. At the time that I'm leaving the house, based on how this, uh, this sentence is constructed, there's no certainty of my parents knowing that I'm leaving the house. There's no certainty of completion of my parents uh, having knowledge of that. Subjunctive. The P is for para que, which is another way to say so that, or in order that. So that is a lot more common in English. We can see that in the example, los maestros dan tarea para que los estudiantes practiquen. The teachers give homework so that the students practice. When the teachers are giving the homework, there's no certainty of the students actually practicing. So, subjunctive, no certainty of completion. The A stands for a no ser que, which is another way to say unless. We can see this in the example, no voy a la fiesta a no ser que él me invite. I'm not going to the party unless he invites me. At the time when I'm saying I'm not going to the party, I have no certainty that he's going to invite me or not. Uh, so I have no certainty of completion of that second action, the, the action in the second clause. The C is for con tal de que, meaning as long as or provided that. And we can see that in the example, puedo hacer la tarea con tal de que el profesor la explique bien. I can do the homework provided that the teacher explains it well. Or I can do the homework as long as the teacher explains it well. Because of how that sentence is set up, from the perspective of the main clause, when I'm saying I can do the homework, but only if this circumstance happens, only if the teacher uh, explains it well, provided that the teacher explains it well, as long as the teacher explains it well, I don't know, from the main clause perspective, if the teacher is actually going to explain it well. Therefore, no certainty of completion. And the last one, en caso de que, meaning in case of. We can see that in the example, Siempre uso la escalera en caso de que haya un incendio. I always use the staircase in case that there is a fire, or in case of there being a fire. When I'm using the staircase, I have no certainty of completion of there being a fire. Don't know if that's going to happen, so I can't use indicative. It's got to be subjunctive. As we can see, these expressions all indicate that at the time of the action in the main clause, there is no certainty of completion of the verb or the action in the subordinate clause. And that's why that subordinate clause in all of these has to use el presente de subjuntivo. So remember, AAA space, these adverbial clauses or these uh, phrases that introduce adverbial clauses always must use the subjunctive. Muchas gracias por ver este video. Adios.